This is The Art of Thought, episode 8, recorded on August 29th, 2018. My name is Kwaku Asafua J, and today I am joined with a friend of mine. What is that name? Rafiq. <laughs> yeah, so he was with me um, on the second episode, uh, What is Art? That episode actually went really well. Um, the feedback was actually really good on that one. Um, so my phone is acting up, uh, and so... Yeah, so brought you back on. Talk about this one because it's something that I know you do martial arts, and I know we talk about this kind of stuff all the time anyway. Mm-hmm. And we both watch Dragon Ball Super. So for those of you don't who don't know, Dragon Ball Super is an amazing anime show, um, and it it's just martial arts based, obviously with a lot of screaming because it's anime. But <laughs> in it, a character named Goku, the main character, he enters this state called Ultra Instinct. And basically, he's normally Goku acts on emotions all the time. Like, he's just really chill and like he's always like goofy. And then when he gets angry, he gets stronger. That's usually how it goes in most things in fighting and everything like that. But Mushin um, says that um, pretty much the best part of the best, your best life can be lived uh, like with no emotion. So, in a way, it's controversial. Because, you know, if you put no emotion in just about everything, you know, loved ones, right? What are you going to do about it? So, Mushin, or no, Mushin no Shin, I think that's what it said. Um, basically, it says here, or it's Mushin no State. Um, and Mushin no Shin is a Zen expression that translates to the mind with no mind. It says it's, uh, this is coming from uh, physique, physiqueonomics.com. And it says it's a mental state in which very highly trained martial artists said that they are said to enter during combat to be mindless, free of emotions such as f- uh, anger or fear. The idea being that the further you distance yourself from emotions, feelings, or thoughts, the better you will perform. While Mushin refers implicitly to martial arts, Mushin no state is what uh, in, we in the West know as flow state. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, what do you think about this? Um, I actually enjoy this. Um, I didn't even know that there was a term motion no state. Mm-hmm. I know uh, Bruce Lee's term is empty the mind, mm-hmm. and that's what I like to do a lot when um it comes to combat or martial arts combat. Because you know I'm a very emotional person and I live from moment to moment. Yeah. But you know when you're trying to get something done, you don't want to have no emotions. You don't want to have no negativity. Yeah. At all, you know. You want to step in there and do your thing, you know. And usually in martial arts, you want to get, you want to be one and done, you know. Get in there, finish mm-hmm. it as quick as possible, you know. You're not trying to get no damage, you know. You want to live a long life. Yeah. So, uh, Musha No State talks well about that, you know. It talks about, you know, becoming mindless, you know. Taking away all the negative thoughts or anything that distracts you. Visualization, I do a lot of that. Visualizing yourself in different scenarios, mainly a positive scenario, but I like to visualize myself in all scenarios, you know, because possibilities are endless, and, you know, sometimes you may get beaten, you know, mm-hmm. and then other times you're going to win, you know? Yeah. Um, as long as you put in the work and the practice, um, like it's saying on uh, physiognomics, um, different rituals as far as, you know, the music you listen to or different warm-ups you do, um, music is a good thing that it uh, also spoke about mm. um, listening to the hype music whatever gets you hype yeah especially in the gym and stuff oh yeah exactly you know just doing a thing knowing that you can be anything and do anything it's just you know did you put the work in you know it's not talent it's hard work yeah and that's why like for me um when I take people, for instance, with me to the gym, because uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we were just talking before this, and the reason why this was so late, uh, not 12.30 like I wrote, was because I had just come back from the gym, driving through town, back from the gym, and when I'm in the gym, I take, before I do like a major whatever it is, I take like a, uh, I take a deep breath, like multiple deep breaths to just put myself in the zone. I'm not... I'm not thinking about really anything. I'm just, I'm just like in focus in Zen in a way. Um, that's my new way of doing things just in general. And so I feel like when I do that, I get more done easier. And so it's just, 
it becomes an easier thing for me to do to work out, um, for instance, and to do homework even. Um, there's a time and place for it, obviously. It's, it's not for everywhere. For instance, like with loved ones and stuff, obviously, if they think, for instance, Spock, you've, have you seen Star Trek, any of them? Uh, Spock often gets in trouble because he's like emotionless pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's better for me to to not act on emotion when I'm in the gym, just focus because you hear those people that are like super loud in the gym, for example, you know, when they're lifting and things like that to hype themselves up. They're super loud on, like you said, for hyping themselves up, but they're not, mm -hmm. they're not, they're not, they're not thinking probably about anything. They're focusing strictly on what they're doing and they're not trying to put emotion into it. They're just kind of just going for it. Like you hear in martial arts too. Yeah. So it's, I like this topic in that, like I watch anime sometimes, you know, and a lot of the time, some of the crazier characters, like the stronger characters, they they literally um some of them, a lot of them they act on emotion but some of the craziest characters they literally don't like they look like exactly. they're like a sociopath like they just don't blink they don't move one punch man is one of them yeah one punch this man. this man Sai, saitama uh he literally <laughs> does not blink or do anything he's just kind of like derpy faced he's just like flat faced yeah. and he just is the strongest person in the entire show and no one expects what he does you know that he's so strong they think he's like a joke because he looks really skinny. And then when he starts running, he just sprints across the world in like a second. It's crazy, you know. But that that topic line, you know, going into it, um, it's a it's a really cool thing. Um, it says here, uh, let's see, yeah. So there's a TED talk apparently. Um, talk on flow. So basically, you know, in in the Western side, we, instead of mushin no state or mushin no shin, uh, we Apparently, they call it the flow state, and I didn't even know that was even a thing. And it says that um, presented on a uh, Mihal, I don't, if, if I say this so wrong, uh, uh, psychologist Mihale, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name, but it's, he seems pretty smart, um, said in a TED talk in 20, in 20, 2004. Um, where he makes the point that in order to achieve a state of flow, aka mushin no state or mushin no shin, um, a balance needs to be struck between the challenge of the task and the skill of the performer. If the current skill of the performer is higher than the challenge, entering the flow state is impossible. That's interesting. And there's like a diagram um, that says, in fact, let me see if I can pull up the diagram. Uh, yeah, let me do that. So you can see the diagram right here on my screen. It says like, let me make this full screen actually. There we go. So you can see the diagram on my screen and you see challenge is below and then you see skill is up. And if your skill is higher, the, the teeter-totter is off balance, um, which means no flow. So they have to be in pretty much perfect balance. So it says, this is what we call boredom. When something isn't challenging enough to justify giving you giving it your full attention, you become dis disengaged. Next up is the challenge task. The challenge of the task is beyond the current skill level of the performer. This can become a double-edged sword if you aren't careful. A challenge that is beyond your current skill level marginally will increase your chances of entering flow state by encouraging you to increase your skill level to meet the challenge. Uh, however, if the challenge is beyond your current level by a lot, you will become... Uh, demotivated and entering Mushin no Shin will be impossible. So if it's too far, uh, too far ahead, uh, the challenge is too difficult. You're not gonna be able to enter because you'll just get frustrated. And when you get fr and frustration is an emotion, therefore you can you know you won't enter that state. Uh, the perfect environment for Mushin no, Sh Mushin no state or flow is when the challenge is high and your skill set is high enough to tackle the challenge. This is when you're fully engaged. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. Um, are you, do you have the link open by the way? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. So can you, you want to, you want to just, uh, mention, uh, the steps into it? Yeah. So the steps into it is becoming mindless. Mm -hmm. Um, now here it says, mm -hmm. um, that one can overthink, which is basically overanalyzing the current moment or situation that you're in. Um, it says you can only enter motion no state once you become fully focused on the task at hand, extinguishing the self-doubt and self-critique. 
Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like um, becoming mindless is just taking all thoughts and putting them to the side. It's kind of like meditation. If y'all don't do meditation, I would recommend it. You know, yeah. meditation helps you learn and help you practice mm-hmm. how to empty your mind, empty your thoughts, and focus on one certain thing. Then next up, number two is visualization. Visualization, you always want to visualize yourself with the positive outcome. I mean, now me, I say always visualize yourself with a positive outcome, but I also visualize myself as if I was in defeat and how I would react to it or respond to that. And I would respond in a positive way because, you know, it's not defeat, it's just another lesson. So visualize yourself always in a positive manner, a positive term. Look into the outcome. How do you see yourself doing this workout or conquering this goal or going into this fight? How do you see yourself beating this person or outdoing this person or surpassing your own skills to outwill this person? You know, there's different scenarios in different cases. Yeah. Um, The third one is avoid distractions. Now, there could be many distractions. One big thing it says here that can get us distracted, especially in the gym, is talking. Um, now it says you don't want to fully, you know, isolate yourself like a monk. Yeah. But uh, you do want to make sure, you know, you're not talking uh, so much to the point where, you know, you, you get distracted. Yeah. You, yeah. You don't care about, you know, the workout. Now you're just standing in there and you basically wasted your time at the gym. Yeah. Um, the fourth one is practice. Um, practice whatever you do, whatever skill set. Um, Kwaku, he does design and he does uh, photography, film, and stuff like that. So, you know, if he didn't practice that, then it wouldn't come out good. You know, me, I do martial arts. I, I'm starting music and stuff like that. If I didn't practice that every day, then I wouldn't be, you know, good. You know, the motion, motion, no shin would be irrelevant. It wouldn't happen just because, you know, I'm mediocre instead of working hard every day, working at the skills and crafting them into where... It just comes natural to me. It's like mm-hmm. second nature. Yeah. So always practice. Yeah. Um, it says specific. Specific. <laughs> specificity. Specific. 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 There you go. <laughs> uh, everything. So it's basically saying everything else in this article, you aren't doing something you enjoy. Make sure you're doing something you enjoy, basically. Mm-hmm. Um. Because you can't false engineer emotion no state. Yeah. Um, you can only be fully engaged in an activity or process that you enjoy. So pick something you love and work on it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Pick something you love and enjoy and just conquer that. And then, you know, add on to that. You know, a lot of people, they want to be stagnant into one thing, you know. Like, I know people that says you can, you should only be a musician uh, and focus on that. And then that's all you're known for. But I believe in... Hey, you can be great at many things, so maybe focus on one thing that you're really good at now, and then eventually branch off into other things that you always had your eye on, and then add it to your arsenal and become great at those things, you know? Mm-hmm. And then number six is rituals. Um, so, different rituals. So, do you listen to music? How do you warm up? Um, Kweku mentioned that uh, he takes deep breaths before his workout get in, to get himself in a zen state, you know? different aspects like that. Me, I do different uh, warm-up exercises, different stretches, different movements and stuff like that before I get into my workouts. Um, so, you know, find what you, what works for you, you know. Is it music? Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, different weird movements that get you ready in the zone? Um, is it stretching, you know, different aspects? Yeah. And uh, then, yeah, number seven, music. You know, find uh Whoever gets you hype, uh, or whoever, whatever music gets you in the zone. Where I know uh, for meditation, it's binarial beats or different nature-like sounds. Like find what music works for you and utilize that to your advantage in whatever you do. And then in, in closing, it says uh, while fully achieving motion, no state takes time and practice. The more you begin to realize that this state does not exist, the positive effects it can have on your productivity and performance the more you will be willing to work at it mm-hmm. so yeah so the more you work at it the more results come mm-hmm. and then the more natural it is um at any moment and given time next thing you know 
um, whatever you're doing, like if it's martial arts, instead of them nerves coming in, you know, you're actually <laughs> bad or you're in the zone, you know, yeah. the crowd gets you in the zone. You know, it's like it's a different feel, a different vibe, a different energy. Yeah. So it always work. Yeah, so it's it's really it's it's really uh it's a really interesting state to be in. It looks like my microphone is like peaking. Let me lower that a little bit. Uh, it looks like it's a it's a interesting state to be in. Um and it says here um Ono Zone is like uh that's like repetitive minimum wage work for the for the teeter totter um part that I was talking about. It's like repetitive minimum minimum wage work uh makes you happy, right? Because you're in the moment. Um yeah, in a way, as long as, you know, you just, he said he thinks he saw that on a TED Talk. I think, yeah, there was a TED Talk about it. I don't remember which one I watched, but I saw something on it, and it was, it was really interesting. So it's just the whole the whole idea, a lot of the top, top CEOs that you hear of, it feels like as if, um, like, they have no problem straight up firing you because they're trying to get, they're trying to be successful. Mm-hmm. And if you put too much emotion into even your business, you can't let go of people, even though they're not the right fit for what you're looking for, you know. And it's just like it's it's tough. Uh, and he says, Onozone says, I get there has to be a challenge too. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's just it's it's tough, you know. But once you achieve that kind of feeling, it's not even like a feeling feeling. It's literally just. It's literally like another term for focus, you know. Mm-hmm. It's a it's another term for it. Let me let me put my phone on vibrate. Twitter is going crazy right now. So it's it's just it's a very interesting um place to be in cuz when I work out or when I'm working on some design, even when you're working on design, music, whatever, any of mm-hmm. our friends are working on anything, uh you know, Omari was on the show on the what is art part of it. And yeah. he just said, uh, I know based on seeing him in his graphic design lab when he was working on, uh, you know, his exit portfolio review, mm-hmm. um, this guy was extreme focused. Yeah. He was extreme. Like, he didn't even notice I was next to him. That was how focused he was. <laughs> I just I just stood there because, you know me, I'll just stand there and just stare at you mm-hmm. for a second until you notice. And if you don't, I'll walk away for a second uh, because <laughs> I know you're too focused, so I won't bother. Yeah. Um, so it's just... It was it was an interesting thing for him. Um and you remember when my friend Isaac, you and I, we were oh, yeah. in that photo lab. Uh he said that he's he's like he said that he felt even though we were laughing and stuff like that, he felt like when we were trying to adjust those lights to have almost no shadow and mm-hmm. stuff for his YouTube thing, um he was like, "Man, it's like it was like the perfect moment. We spent what two or three hours just trying to get it exactly right." Um yeah make sure right skin colors are correct because you're like between skin colors between me and him so mm-hmm. we try to get everything exactly right the posture exactly right the tripod exactly right we weren't even thinking about anything else but just trying to get this thing done and it achieved it you know so that's you know you do it you achieve um and it was it was really interesting. Even Goku in Dragon Ball Super, this man is insane. Obviously, I'm not gonna spoil it because for Eng- for America, it's technically not the English dub is not even like finished. It's not even close, <laughs> so I'm not gonna mention it. But Goku has achieved some amazing things, um, based mm-hmm. on from what from him just being uh you know normal, like him not thinking about craziness. All he thinks about is food, um. And fighting. That's pretty much all Goku thinks. And challenges. That's all he thinks about. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally it. He thinks about food and challenges. Drink, eat, and sleep. That's all he does. That's literally all he does. He don't even take care of his kids. He don't. <laughs> you got That's, Piccolo for that. I know you got Piccolo. Piccolo, go take <laughs> care of Goten. Oh, that's terrible. Piccolo just like, Piccolo's like the, um, what is it called? What's that word? Stepdaddy. Not stepdad. Uh, uh, I don't know the word. Piccolo is that parent, is that extra parent that comes in to help the main parent. He's that dude. He just appears out of nowhere when anyone's in, in peril. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. But Piccolo is hilarious. Oh, so yeah. he be beating the mess out of them. I know. He's like, dodge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you the way. Piccolo disciplines kids. That's what he mm-hmm. does. Piccolo is a disciplined person. That's terrible when you think about it, how Dragon Ball has done it. Uh, Piccolo. It says, but segueing from all that because it was hilarious. Um, 
I also brought in another link. Um, it's called Avolition because at some point, if you are not, if you're emotionless too much, even more outside of your, um, even more outside of your workplace or your whatever hobby thing you're doing, um, people can view you as I don't know if this is even a word. I'm gonna say abolitionist, and it says, uh, "Is it it's abolitionist?" This is from Wikipedia, straight up. Um, people with abolition often want to complete certain tasks, but lack the ability to initiate behaviors necessary to complete them. Abolition is a symptom sometimes uh, is a symptom of some other disorder. It might be considered clinical disturbance of a self or coexisting second disorder. That's not what I'm looking for. Where is this thing? But basically, abolition is basically in term. Um, what am I? Where, where did I just read? It's basically like an example of it is when you lack motivation in a way um, to do anything or you seem like you lack motivation to do anything. Basically, it's like an extreme like motion is a thing that you you get into and get out of constantly. Mm-hmm. But when you're constantly in it, that can't that's not good, you know. And so. I'm not sure if the term was abolition, um, but there was another term that I had brought up, and basically it's when you completely just don't phase, you don't get phased at all about anything, zero emotion at all. Yeah, it's kind of like being disconnected. Yeah, disconnected. You seem like a was it sociopath or psychopath where yeah. you just don't <laughs> you just don't care at all about anything. Like you doesn't seem like you care about a single thing. Um, and that's also not good at all. Um, it's not abolition. It's something else. Let me see. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. It says here, it's apathy. I think that's what it was. It was apathy. There you go. That's what it was. It's apathy. Um, so what you can do, Rafiq, is you can like scroll down or you can just type in apathy on Google because that's what it was. Yeah, I just got it. Yeah. And apathy, which I'll pull up in a second for you guys to see the link to, is a lack of feeling, emotion, interest, and concern. Apathy is a state of indifference or the suppression of emotions such as concern, excitement, motivation, or passion. An apathetic individual has absence of interest in and concern about emotional, social, spiritual, uh, philosophical, or physical life and the world. That's some, That's like the extreme side of pretty much motion in a way. It feels like it. Um, basically just you just don't have any emotion almost permanently um which is uh and it says here actually relating to it, it says in positive psychology apathy is described as a result of individuals feeling like like do they they do not possess the level of skill required to confront a challenge i e flow uh it may be a result of perceiving no challenge at all um the challenge and then in e g it says the challenge is irrelevant to them, or conversely, they have learned helplessness. Apathy may be a sign of a more specific mental problems, such as schizophrenia, dementia. We're not uh, psychologists to be able to say any of that, but we're just kind of saying. Um, mm-hmm. However, apathy is something that all people face in some capacity, which is actually kind of true, um, especially when you're trying to graduate from school. Uh mm-hmm. <laughs> However, apathy, yeah, and it says it's a natural response to disappointment, dejection, stress, uh, a response. A res- as a response, apathy is a way to forget about the negative feelings. These, the, that's, this type of common apathy is usually only felt in the short term. When it becomes a long term or lifelong state uh, is when deeper social and psychological issues are most likely present. So it's, like I said, like it said there too, it says, Apathy is essentially a is a more long term. Um, I wish I had Photoshop. I would just craft up like a graph while I'm, like craft up a diagram while I'm like talking. Yeah. But actually, I do have Photoshop open, but <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Um, basically, apathy is in the timeline, not timeline. And like, if you draw a line straight across, just close your eyes and imagine the line straight across like a blank field. Um, one end is motion. And the other end is apathy. And and then in the middle is apathy a little bit because apathy can go from uh, like short term ish to long term. And when it's the long term side of apathy, that's when you, um, you know, that's when you just literally 
probably something's going on. Uh, you should probably get checked. Um, and let me actually pull up this graph, not graph. I keep calling everything a graph. Is this going to open? Nope. It just opened up a new link instead of the graph. Why? I don't understand. Uh, is it going to open? No. Can I at least open up this graph? Okay. You know what? I'm going to do it this way. Seriously. All right. I'm going to do it this way. Now you guys can see the thing and I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in. Thank you, Wikipedia and Firefox. All right. So just look at this colorful thing, um, this graph here. We talked about flow that if your challenge, if you're, if the challenge is high and your, and your skill level is high, um, then you enter flow, flow state, which is motion in a way in the Western, that's what they call flow. Um, and if the challenge is low and skill is low, supposedly, um, you, you're in a state of apathy. It's this mental state in which in terms of challenge skill level, according to the same guy that I talked about before in his flow model. You can see his, his beautiful face right here. Thank goodness for him because I wouldn't have this topic to talk about. And uh, and then in between all that stuff is like arousal. So if you have a, like an all right skill level and the challenge is high, arousal. Mm -hmm. And like if you have a low skill level and the challenge is high, anxiety, because you're like, oh, I can't achieve this. <laughs> and if, if your skill level is great, like medium all right, and the challenge is super low, you're kind of bored, you're like, whatever. Yeah. And if the challenge is low and you're like, you're really good at your job, you're pretty chill. It's like a relaxed job. You don't have to do much. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy for you. So that's kind of the, it's kind of the way it goes. It's kind of a cool graph. I never would have thought of this kind of illustration, even though mm -hmm. I do graphic design, which is really sad. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's 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 basically like the cycle of emotions in general. Like when I think about this now, because I didn't. What, what you guys don't realize is that we don't actually put that much research into the topic at hand. It's just something that pops up into one of our heads at like midnight, mm -hmm. and then it kind of works. And I'm just like, cool. Let's pull up a few articles to refer to it and just go with it from there. <clears throat> So I always learn things from people like messaging me and saying like, this is what it really means. And I'm like, okay, cool. So yeah. it's always cool to hear that stuff. Should have been a psych major, man. So I would have <laughs> been, I would have straight A's. That would have been a fun, yeah. Right. I would have had been, straight A's. I've been all <laughs> I know. I know everything about everyone. As soon as they turn their head, I'd be like, oh, he thinks that this is what's going on in his brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Thanos. Uh, but yeah. yeah. So where's my mouse? My mouse straight up disappeared. Okay. But, uh, oops, oops. That was, you didn't see that. No one saw that. But that's, that's essentially like apathy in a way. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, it reminds me of, uh, this USC fighter named, uh, Bones Jones. John Bones Jones. I'm sure a few of y'all are USC fans, so y'all know who that is. Um, just because, you know, at first it was motivation, you know, it was motion, no state, you know, going out there and basically dominating dudes at what they did best, you know, breaking them and then just finishing them off in uh, the USC ring. But then it just came to a point where it became apathy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he said it started to get too easy. You know, there's no challenge. Like, mm -hmm. why should I work out? Why should I do this? Why yeah. should I do that? And, I mean, I don't blame him because there's just – from from the get, you know, just no competition. You know, it's like he just so on a high pedestal at his craft and skill level that, you know, it devalues, you know, the victories that he gets. Mm -hmm. You know, and then finally like this dude named D C came and, you know, gave him a bit of a challenge. But even then the second fight they did, he ended up KOing D C with a head kick, right to the skull. So you know, he really reminds me of apathy. And mm -hmm. then, you know, there's a lot of people that, or some people that, you know, feel ap apathy through, uh, throughout their lives. You know, yeah, yeah, lack like of motivation, said. you know. Yeah. Just going home, watching a few depression shows. Which isn't good and, at all to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, doing the same thing every day, you know, in and out, going to a nine to five, you know. I mean, and, you know, for us coming out of college and stuff like that, or even high school, I mean, 
it's not too bad to have a nine to five, but mm-hmm. utilize that as to save up money to what you really want to do. Exactly, you know? which is really what I'm wanna, doing now. Is exactly yeah. really want to invest in. You know, it's not. Don't think that you gotta work a nine to five the rest of your life. You know, some people they be like, oh, that's all they I'm need. Okay with yeah, yeah. working a nine to five. You know, for me it's like that's all fine and dandy, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm trying to the things that I visualize and the things I want to do. I want to change the world and make it to where you know not only myself but my family down the line and then also my close friends like my boy Kwaku here Mm -hmm. you know I can do whatever I want for you know I can be like oh you need you know you get injured and you need this medical bill yeah it's like I got you (laughs) yeah or you need to travel all right come with me you know Mm -hmm. it's like that's what I want to do and then just help it to where other people as you for as us Mm. can do the same yeah so like here ono zone i hope i'm saying your name right ono zone sounds a lot like one of our friends doesn't it (laughs) i can't tell so i'm just i'm just gonna play it off uh he says um he said this a while ago unfortunately i forgot to get to his message while i was reading the article um he said he's received he's sure sure, he says sure i've received i've god i can't read He said, sure, I've had this feeling of curiosity or con- conscious, I can't, I can't read. Sure, I've had this feeling of living consciously before, but it's hard, uh, it's hard to maintain. Uh, and he also said, I'm certain, I'm certainly not feeling it now, but how do I get into this state, which is, I guess he's talking about um, motion, uh, without, mm-hmm. without music, like apart from music. I used to read, I used to read my way into the state. Uh, like books about consciousness or self-help books. Uh, I'm just reading through all his all his uh, things, but he says mm-hmm. it's a good topic and stuff. And no, he's not Kyoshi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, and I just said his name. Dang. Oh well. <laughs> no one knows his last name though, so that's fine. <laughs> but um, yeah. So he's wondering. I guess I'm gonna have you answer this because you may since you brought the music part. Uh, he said, yeah. "How do I achieve the state? How do you think that he can achieve some kind of state of like?" you know no no state i guess apart from yeah. music i mean apart from music i mean i would practice like your senses you know um when i first uh, was getting into meditation and stuff like that mm-hmm. um what it teaches you or like what i found helpful was just practicing sitting there and listening to your breaths and you know focusing on how you're breathing. Are you breathing properly? Are you breathing improperly? Mm -hmm. Utilizing your breathing to basically cancel out your thoughts and then eventually start focusing on sounds Mm -hmm. um, that are around you, you know, enhancing your hearing and stuff like that. Um, Also, if you go outside and, you know, enhancing your vision or whatever. But then, you know, as you do this, you start realizing that, you know, time in and time out, that you're getting better and better at, you know, canceling out a lot of these emotions. And then once you get good at all those things, then go into your thoughts, you know, letting your thoughts flow, the negative and the positive, because we're always going to have a balance of both. So learning how to let them flow together, you know, and utilizing that to make your negative thoughts into positive thoughts and then your positive thoughts to even greater positive, positive Mm -hmm. thoughts, if there is something greater than positivity. You know, um, there's binarial beats, you know. Oh, yeah, I remember sound. that. I wanted yeah, to create bi- some of those back in the day. Yeah, binarial beats, nature sounds, you know. Research it, you know. See what works for you. Even, like, like I was saying, like, different movements. Like, some people, they got to move. Some people are just natural movers before you, like, sit down and start thinking, you know, find positions. You know, are you best at sitting on your butt? Are you best at laying down uh, on your back? Are you best at laying on your side your left side your right side figure out what positions work for you you know figure out if you are good with sound around you or if you're good with sound without sound Mm -hmm. you know practice with binary or practice with uh music and practice without music yeah you know see what works best because if you can do it without music then with music makes it an even greater process you know an even easier process for you to hop in it you know it's just endless practice to find yourself you know find what works for you that's it's trial and error you know that's life yeah so find what works for you endless and you know eventually you know it's always going to change i mean 
Yeah, it's going to change. change. Then, then, exactly. If you're changing, then that's, that's a good aspect as well. But, you know, notice some changes as well. You know, even ask people. You know, ask Kweku. Kweku may do something different. You know, ask other friends. You know, they may do something different. What works for them? See it. Try what they it works for them and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, then, you know, uh, thank them for uh, helping you out. But, you know, throw it to the side and find something else. Mm. You know? Yeah. It's a daily problem. Yeah, so that's that's what he recommends, definitely, because um, obviously we're not professionals or anything like that, but this is just kind of stuff that we kind of feel like, yeah, maybe we do achieve this kind of stuff uh, when we do some of our day-to-day activities. Um, it's it's something that definitely, like I said in the past, something that definitely seems to help, because um, you imagine if like you were you were mad like a lot of people say that when you're mad go to the gym work out maybe punch a few punching bags or something like that so you don't take it out on people and stuff like that but in a way that actually doesn't really help to me because like um if you if you're punching a punching bag you're imagining that person or whatever happened exactly. as the punching bag and it could possibly just make it worse to me it feels like it possibly put would make it worse um you know because like obviously don't go up and punch some random person because that's terrible yeah. You go to jail for that, uh, <laughs> but but it just seems like it doesn't work. Try to try to focus on your breathing if you if you're feeling like a. To me, it feels like if you're feeling a state of not necessarily apathy, because apathy is like you're just emotionless. Yeah, and you're not emotionless if you're angry. Obviously, it's an emotion. Just if you're feeling angry or sad or something like that, try to just focus on your breathing. To me, it feels like that's what it is. Just focus on like figure out what calms you down. Uh, figure out you know what you like to do um just what calms you down do it for a little bit um just it takes some time to figure it out obviously it took me a while to figure out like oh this is the type of music i need to listen to um in the gym in order to like achieve certain lifts and stuff like that like people are like man they see my phone in the gym and they're like why are you listening to like usher in the gym i'm like i don't know i just like i like usher <laughs> so yeah. like why are you listening to something upbeat and i'm like I don't know. Sometimes I do. My playlist is crazy. My playlist has like, you know, Ghanaian, African music. Listen it's got, everything. it's got country. No, it doesn't have country in it. It's got like EDM a little bit in it. It's got like um this group called Trishnal. If you've ever heard of them, I think it's T R I T I O N A L. Uh, it's got them in it. It's got, it's got old songs. It's got newer songs. Um, it's got everything in it. It's got like some music that's not even in uh english you know it's got italian music in it it's i have so much stuff on my playlist and it cycles through them and sometimes i just put it on radio mode on spotify mm-hmm. and i'm just like uh i'm like all right time to discover new music mode you know yeah. i'm in that mode now so i put that on and i just do like say back day which was today and i do that the next thing you know i discover some more music that adds to my list of just focus because if you're using music for instance to me to focus achieve focus and flow state or motion um you need to have a certain amount of music available to you because Mm -hmm. if you only have like two songs and whatever you're doing is like half an hour long the moment that two songs ends and it switches to some random music that makes no sense to what you're doing you end you exit that state immediately and it ruins your entire flow it ruins everything and then you just can't focus for probably the rest of the entire thing it's terrible that's probably why tests are so hard for me though, because like oh, yeah. the first time when everyone's I taking their test, test, I suck at them too. <laughs> when people are like doing their test, I'm all calm and stuff like that. But the first person to get up and say they're done, I'm like that switches my mode immediately because at first everyone's similar and you can't mm-hmm. put headphones on in a testing environment either. So at first everyone's similar, and then all of a sudden. Uh, one person gets up and I bet 90%, like 70% of the people in that classroom are probably like, they'll probably start thinking about what that person did to be finished so fast, you know? And then the moment you start thinking about other things other than what you're doing, you exit that state and then everything falls apart. It's so difficult to do that. You know, uh, part of me is like, was like, I think my friend was, I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, yeah, you should go to, like, the disability office, you know, at our campus, mm-hmm. and uh, file for, like, disability thing just so that you can take a test outside of a classroom. <laughs> and I was like, you know how hard it, you know, I, I actually thinking about doing that. And then mm-hmm. I realized I saw, I had some other friends that actually filled it out, 
even mm-hmm. though they don't have an actual disability, they just can't focus in a in a testing environment. Um, but that paperwork is so much, and they make you feel like doctor things and stuff. And I'm like, I don't really have oh, a disability nah, as yeah. far as I know, but I would love to have taken a test by myself in a separate office and just by myself. I probably do way better on everything. Mm-hmm. You know, just like in the gym, if I don't have headphones on, I forget them in from at home. That gym workout gets cut in half. Because I can't focus. Everyone else yeah. is lifting like freaking 300 pounds, say a bench or something. And then I'm over here lifting like 225, <laughs> you know? And then you hear those people screaming like, oh, and they're just making all this noise. Yeah. And I'm like, or slamming weights on the ground, especially at our school, mm-hmm. where I'm like, I'm not lifting a lot and I'm not trying to mess up my back. So I'm not doing all that. I don't make a lot of noise when I do things. Yeah, I don't need it. Yeah, so... That yeah. means that drain too heavy. <laughs> or he's trying to push himself to a limit. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not about to snap my back because I have no help either. I'm not a giant bodybuilder. I just like working out. Exactly. So it's it's an interesting um <clears throat> dilemma to be in. Um music is not for everyone, obviously. Sometimes you need to just like sh- close out everything around you. Close out your surroundings. You some people are able to focus by closing out their surroundings altogether. You know? I have a friend. She 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 took like twenty credits, twenty one credits, three to, three times what is twenty one? So, um, three times, three times seven. seven. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Twenty one math. Uh, and she took like twenty one credits her first semester at the school, freshman year. It took it actually multiple years. She finished her entire courses in like three years she was working on her master's courses by her fourth year and now she's about to be done with her master's next year because she was already dipping into her master's stuff at the very end of her of her senior uh, inside her senior year she was already doing her master's work mm. and i was like my gosh and she said she's just good at shutting everything out and just doing her own and just focusing on just the task and i'm like i wish i was like that but they don't let you take headphones into a classroom or they don't let you work on your own so that's the problem but in a workplace like a graphic design workplace unless someone's over your shoulder looking at what you're doing which is the thing you mm-hmm. you can have headphones on yeah. in fact they recommend it so it's weird how school they don't recommend it you know i know people might cheat and put like some answers that will like they'll <laughs> they'll, they'll read the answers you know those people who ruin it for everyone they'll read the answers on a piece of paper and then they'll put mm-hmm. headphones on and that's all they're listening to but like it doesn't it's too much work to be doing all that Exactly. so just listen to music and study and you'd be good to go that's how i study so um let me just see something real quick okay let me see where are we at we are not an hour in yet wow it's not even 1 30 jeez but i had a third link open um so we talked about at first how life in some way would be better without emotions we talked about how, um, and that is motion in a way, where you're focusing on your task at hand without emotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about how too much no emo, how how having no emotion for too long can be terrible. Now we're in the middle. How much better life would be without emotions? So these people are taking the other route, where they're like, "All right, if you have no emotion, man, so while we can't turn them off, we can't we can make them work for us." So yeah. these people are talking. This is from Psychology Today. These people are talking about um, how much life, how much better life would be without emotions. Take it with a grain of salt, obviously, because I'm I was just interested in seeing this. Wow, they have a most popular article saying how to spot a narcissist in three in three <laughs> steps. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyways, um, I'm not gonna read this entire thing, um, and because let's be honest, I don't want to. It's a long article, yeah. but it says um. This person says, I often I often imagine how much easier my life would be if I didn't have any feelings. That sounds really sad, the way I said that. Uh, <laughs> sounded really sad how they wrote it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> October 5th, 2017. Um, it says, I wonder, I, I mean, I wouldn't get upset each time I hear about anything uh, about another mass shooting in the news. I wouldn't get so angry when I come up up against ignorance or social injustice i wouldn't lose sleep worrying about my business plan i wouldn't feel threatened by my colleagues who are after the same promotion as i am 
I would be able to express my opinions without fear of criticism. I would easily overcome my shyness during networking events. I would be able to say I was wrong without sweating with shame. I, would, I wouldn't get bored during long meetings, and I wouldn't have gotten so enthralled with the new season of Game of Thrones and prioritize it over writing this blog post. Wow. I feel it. <laughs> uh, all my decisions would be based on logic and mathematical precision, and all of my actions would be in accordance with a well-crafted plan. Um, and at last, this person says... We come equipped with emotions, and that makes life messy, which is true. A lot of the time, in fact, the reason why we have wars and stuff like that is because of emotion. As sad as that sounds. Um, despite the extensive real estate that our frontal lobes occupy in our brains, which is what kind of has, which is where emotions are formed, uh, the emotional centers remain active and loud as ever. They have their tentacles Attached to almost every human activity, they are the cause of many pleasures and pains. They are the influence. They influence our decisions. They shape our personalities. This is a good article already. Like I said, I wasn't going to read it. I've already read two paragraphs. <laughs> this is a good article. Uh, they, they influence our decisions. They shape our personalities. They determine the size of our social networks. They affect the quality of our lives, and they are left unsupervised. Wait, and when they are left unsupervised, they cause trouble. Whether positive or negative, these intense emotions can cause a lot of suffering to many people and can lead to a range of self-destructive actions. But how many people can claim that they are they are really good at operating this part of mental machinery? Yeah, like like uh, Ono is saying, I'm going to refer to him now. It says emotions have been the topic of many self-help books and programs. Um, and a good portion of these resources focus on how to deal with specific emotions, specifically depression, you know, and anger, the negative stuff. The world is all about negative everything nowadays. Um, conquering fear, managing fear, and overcoming depression are very important roles for many people. Yes. Um, emotion regulation is the ability to monitor, evaluate, modify our emotions and our emotional reactions. It's not an anger management. It's not anger management. It's not fear dis deconditioning. It's not positive thinking. Uh, it's, it is not mindfulness medication. It is that, it is that, wait. It is all of that together and more. It is the ability to make uh, ability is the ability that makes it possible. I'm looking. I'm like reading through the little filter of, from my microphone, so it's like mm -hmm. it's making things hard to see. Uh, while you can still hear me, um, emotion regulation is the mental skill that underlies emotional intelligence. And hey, that's similar to uh, the topic at hand. I just re rephrased it. Um, mm -hmm. emotion regulation means that you are scared when you need to be scared and you are fearless when you need to be fearless. It also means that in both cases, you'll most likely be do what will better your and serve your objective and lead to the best possible outcome. And in some ways you can think of motion of that is that very thing. It's a perfect balance. Um, all in all, emotion regulation can play an important role in fulfilling our balanced life. How do we get better at it? How do we become masters of managing our own emotional writing? Uh, and the psychologists have been trying to test in different approaches, you know, and so on and so forth. Like we've been talking about, I'm not going to read anymore. So it's, it's essentially, you know, you can, in the first two paragraphs that were the most relevant to what we were talking about. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about what the he was saying? Or is it a he? Yeah. Theo was saying he's a PhD person. Uh, I found it very uh, interesting. Uh, All right, especially I know. how he was talking about utilizing Game of Thrones <laughs> as a priority over his writing, or trying not to use Game of Thrones as a priority over his writing. Um, but then also, like, emo how emotions can be messy and loud. Like, it's almost like for some people, um, it could be like a distraction and. In this world, it is utilized as a very negative thing. Um, from my perception, I would say <clears throat> that I feel like emotions are seen as very negative just because a lot of people don't communicate. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays people want to hide behind a screen instead of you know <clears throat> talk yeah. to you face to face. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people would rather tell someone else to tell you something instead of you know, communicate what they truly felt mm -hmm. about a situation. Like, you know, if you don't really like something, then, you know, notify that person. If you have an idea, then speak it out. You know, just don't agree with 
the person sitting beside you just because everyone else agrees with them. Yeah. You know, utilize <clears throat> your emotions as, you know, a positive aspect. You know, it's like, it's just like how you can use negative energy as a po- as as a positivity. You can literally use that. Like, if you're feeling angry, like uh, for poets, some poets, if they're feeling angry, then they're going to sit there and they're going to write out zone in into the motion no state mm-hmm. and sit there and just write a whole mixtape or album mm-hmm. yeah and then it happens to be everybody just seems to love it just because they at that moment in time they may connect with it mm-hmm. with the word just because it was just natural natural input mm-hmm. in a given moment you know learn to use your emotions as a positive aspect instead of hiding behind the screen tell yourself today i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to this person you know, whether it's face to face or over the phone, you know, or even ask them to meet up yeah. so that we can talk so that we can communicate. Or if you have uh, a certain feeling about, you know, a lot of people are into politics, you have a certain feeling about politics, then, you know, let your voice be heard. You know, not everybody going to agree with what you're saying, possibly, but at yeah. the end of the day, you know, you let what you felt out, you know, don't bottle up your emotions. That's the reason why they usually come out negative because yeah. a lot of people bottle them up. I think no uh, one will listen experience. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When I was really young, cause I used to be, used to have a temper and stuff like that, you know, you should just bottle everything up, but you can't do that. Cause then it comes out as a volcanic explosion. And then now <laughs> you may be saying things that I mean, probably should have been said, but you could have worded it in a way different way. Cause now you're into an argumentation that, yeah, could turn into you know blows, but but yeah, you know emotions could sway positive and they could sway negative. It's just the practice of how you want to use them. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, it's our decision whether we use them as a negative thing or a positive thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so like, it's uh, it was it's it's a very interesting thing managing your emotions and. In some ways, have you ever seen? I think Star Trek is it Star Trek Into Darkness. I think that's what it is. Have no, you ever, I haven't. Have you seen that? You haven't seen that? No. You should see it because Spock okay. is a perfect example of all of this. Okay. <laughs> Spock is too tuned out of his emotions. Like he's he purposely actually. I think something happened, and he purposely um said, you know what? I think it'd be better if I didn't live with my emotions. So he just doesn't. He he just acts on pure intelligence and no no emotion at all. And he's got a significant other, and the significant other is also kind of upset with him because he doesn't feel things. He just yeah. does things rationally. He doesn't. He doesn't because he's he's too far out of that, um, and and that gets him into trouble too. He's too calculated, you know, and and that's in some ways sometimes you do need your emotion, uh, not tune it out. And it's not that he doesn't have emotion. He does. He just he's just able to not have it which is crazy you know so just so many pop culture things that relate to this stuff because movies literally just relate to all that stuff all the time that's how they make shows in general probably Mm -hmm. the director is probably like i'm feeling this way blah blah let's make a movie based off of something i'm feeling and then Mm -hmm. next thing you know you got that good movie to watch for kids actually even though they most likely won't understand and there's a lot of (laughs) theories around it what is that one movie that's all about emotions it's like a pixar movie or a disney movie all about like this person has emotions um let me see if i can find it this person has emotions and they're and and they they're they make they take physical manifest in her brain so like Mm -hmm. what is that called it's a pixar movie about emotions that was the first thing that filled in it is called uh inside out there you go that movie is all about emotions um it's basically it says here on wikipedia a little um i got really high metacritic 94 percent rotten tomatoes gave it 98 percent imdb gave it 8.4 out of 10 um and basically it was awards it got an award academy award for the best animated picture film um i guess around when it was around 2005 15 um it says here riley or uh, riley is a happy hockey loving 11 year old midwestern girl but her world turns upside down when she and her parents move to San Francisco. Riley's emotions, led by Joy, which is a character in the um, show, in the movie, 
uh, mm-hmm. try to guide her through this difficult, life-changing event. However, the stress of the move brings sadness to the forefront. When joy and sadness... Oh, sadness is literally a character, by the way. Okay. <laughs> and and when sadness and and joy and joy is also a character which is a signif- which is a personification of that emotion too mm-hmm. are inadvertently swept into the far reaches of Riley's mind the only emotions left are left in the headquarters no the only emotions left in the headquarters are anger fear and disgust all mm-hmm. all three of those are also characters so every emotion that she has take take physical manifest as a character mm-hmm. and it shows when only certain emotions are left what happens to you that's pretty much the movie mm. it's amazing i didn't even understand it at first and i was like oh this actually makes perfect sense and it's really cool and it's a mm-hmm. pixar movie for kids yeah interesting mhm kids but yeah so i was just trying to go through you know the three sides of the um the three sides of the of the i i guess three sides of this whole topic of motion um pretty much apathy motion and just the middle of what happened what what you think would happen if you you were too much of one side so yeah that's uh that's pretty much the thing um now we're at the the back of everything what are anything you're working on um to let people know what you're working on man well, right now I'm working on trying to become a professional martial artist, but mm-hmm. on the side, I'm actually working on a music project. I'm working on a mixtape and an album. Uh, the album's called, um, it's going to be called The Toma Space. And then the mixtape, I believe I'm going to call it uh, The Throne of Games because I want to base it off of uh, the Game of Thrones kind of mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I'm working on right now. I'm also I put it on to the side for a little bit, but I'm gonna start getting back into uh, this art project uh, that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. That go has to go with. Oh, I still gotta get your face actually quickly. Yeah. Um, um, faces and uh, animals. Yeah. But but yeah, that's what I'm working on. Okay. I'm always working. Always oh, working. working out. You know? That's true. Both of us. We both do that. Yeah, we both do that. <laughs> people look up to us now. Pe- mm-hmm. People, people. So off topic because this is pretty much you know the end uh people literally on my instagram for instance i hardly post on instagram nowadays because i'm so busy doing things and sleeping too Uh, (laughs) um people literally look at me and they're like man he seems like he works out a lot like Mm -hmm. he's he's diesel so i'm like i'm not i'm not that diesel honestly (laughs) i'm really not that diesel you want to see diesel go to the gym you can oh, you can see right. these people that are diesel like their legs look tiny and their upper body is huge. Oh yeah, yeah those dumb well, those dudes. people <laughs> they work too much on their upper body and not their legs, yeah, which is not legs. good. And that's not good. My legs just look small in general because I'm naturally skinny, so I'm getting yeah. bigger is harder. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. so I'm more toned now. Just like you're toned, yeah, you're not true. bulky, exactly. you're just toned. Oh, yeah, so lean. yeah, lean. There you go. That's the word. So people look at that, but um some things that people can look forward to that i'm doing um i've just soft launched um helixmedia.com uh which is what this podcast was, is going to be under and i think the the show notes and stuff not only will be they will they be under um all of the you know the podcast website stuff you know when you look up the episode but they'll also be on that website as well um, and that and on that website too people can leave comments on the page on the the post of where the podcast is going to be so you can leave comments and send emails and all that stuff everything is going to be finally con uh compilated into one area finally um and then i'm thinking about doing something else as well um because now that obviously helix media tv has a twitch channel doesn't have a youtube just yet and then maybe if you finish what you're working on um you know film wise or even music wise you can show that off on helix media tv as well yeah, and sure. yeah, just collaborations like crazy. Um, exactly. Yeah. Go and get big. Get <laughs> exactly. Because I could go to New York and do an interview. Um, I got an interview coming up apparently from uh, this person. I forgot what her name is. Um, mm-hmm. If I, I have to ask my neighbor. 
Um, she's also an event coordinator and manager of some things. She deals with a lot of celebrity relations stuff. And mm-hmm. this lady, apparently, she's been on the news. I don't really watch the news to know. Uh, she's been on the news about, she wrote a book about her drastic weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. I think she lost like 100 pounds and something. Some crazy amount. Um, and she's been on the news about something. And uh, my neighbor is interested in me uh, interviewing her. So, hey. so uh, she will actually be eventually on the show. I okay. don't know when, but she will actually be on the show. Maybe I'll have you come in too because you work out as well, just like I do. So okay. maybe a relation. Maybe you'll be a regular because, yeah, seems like yeah. the guest ones tend to work out really well. So mm-hmm. she'll be on the thing. And then they got some other things coming up as well. Um, maybe I might do even a... Uh, I'm thinking there's a there's a convention. It's not really related, mm-hmm. but there's a convention in November, NecoCon in, in Hampton. Okay. I'm thinking about doing something there. I'll have a laptop by then, so I can maybe do something there, like mm-hmm. live live from there. Um, yeah. What's that? A comic kind of thing? It's it's something like that. It was for anime. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna go to that because it's tradition now to go to that. Yeah. Um, When's that? I have no clue. I think it's like the first week of November, like November 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, some weekend. It's like three days long. Uh, so I'm going to go to that guaranteed. And by that time, I'll have my new car. It's great. So you don't even have to drive your car. You can actually probably just park your car at in front of my house, and we can take my car down. That's a bet. Yeah, so that'd be easier if you want to go to that, too. Oh, you know? yeah, I want to go. Yeah, <laughs> grow the, cro- the squad down there. Yeah. I have usual people, um, so I'll do that. You know Marcus, right? You met him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to that. So he's the usual person as well, and my friend Telvin too. So, okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking about doing something like that down there. Who knows? Um, eventually, I want to, <clears throat> maybe a year or so, I want to, if I continue doing this and it works out really well, I want to do like a panel there, mm-hmm. like host my own panel, um, which will be pretty cool, a live stream panel. How amazing would that be? Uh, yeah so yeah so i don't know what it'd be about but we'll see what happens um yeah so that is about it that was uh the topic of emotion and emotional success hope you guys enjoy it as always the if you're watching live you're watching live but just let you know the the show notes will be on the website and also be on every when you watch it afterwards after the fact So, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoy your Wednesday and take care. Peace.